Drive. It's a beautiful day in northern Michigan, uh, about noon, I guess, and we are working through our uh, poultry processing day. So, and um, uh, here's my area that I'm working in, and that's my my new uh, killing cone stand. The one I had before was like a cabinet. It was made out of an old pig feeder. And we had that one when we were doing the killing inside, made a horrible mess. But in the cabinet, it, it kind of contained the blood. And, and when the animals are dying, they kick, you know, and they'll kick manure like onto the roof and all over you and stuff. So the cabinet was good inside, but outside, not so good because the wind would catch it and blow it over and it would blow it over five times a year and every time i'd say well i need to do something about that but all i would do is pick it up and then have to use it on friday but this is the i think a lot of people are going to be doing turkeys now a lot of tribes people or some of you and so this is a way that we figured out to immobilize them and hold them because if you just chop their heads off their wings are really powerful and they'll flap them with no head they'll flap them uncontrollably and they can break their wings so you want to hold their wings uh, if they're up to 33 pounds they will fit in a five gallon bucket like that so this five gallon bucket these guys let me dump one out so i can show you the size of the hole but there's the hole Okay, so it's four or five inches across. It needs to be big enough that I can get my arm in like this, okay? And that way I can grip the head of the turkey when they're sitting in the floor of a trailer or wherever they are in a cage. And then the turkey will actually move towards me. And all I'm doing really is guiding his head through that hole. And then I take the the handle on the bucket and I can hold him and he's pretty much immobilized he can't get out he cannot get out there is one caution though that you have to remember if I'm holding this bucket in such a way that when he kicks he can get me with these they're pretty good and they're pretty sharp along the edges actually very sharp along the edges now that I'm feeling them but they kick with such uh, fervence, such strength, that they can lay you open. And it's, it's happened to me. Um, when we're doing turkeys, very rarely do I let the little kids do it because, uh, you know, they're kicking so hard a kid could lose an eye or something else. Okay, I want to show you an example here. Here's a turkey that I put in this bucket, and when I was putting them in, he pulled his leg down in and his leg was sticking out where his head was and so was his head so I just pulled his head down a little bit and used the knife you cut on both sides of the neck and then they just you know very quickly bleed out and they you know they flop around a little there's a little bit of movement but uh, you know they don't break their wings but in this case the leg was inside and look what he's done. There was enough strength to kick a hole in the side of this bucket. Now these buckets are not exactly uh, Fort Knox or anything, but <coughs> I don't know as I could do that. So that gives you, and, and he actually broke his foot doing that. See how it's misshapen? Which he's not gonna need anymore. And we're not gonna need it either. We will take him in and, and process him, and his feet won't matter too much. I was just talking about turkeys up to 33 pounds will fit in a, in a bucket, in a white bucket. All right, and then when you get from 33 to 50, which is this guy here, uh, we just did one exactly like him, and he was 47 pounds. 47 pounds? Okay. So... This is a 15 gallon, uh, you know, industrial uh, fluid 
barrel. They use them in the dairy industry quite a bit for the chemicals that you, they use to clear out the lines and stuff. And I get them, I use them for all kinds of stuff, but they work perfect for birds that are this big. And I bet you I could put a, a 55 pounder in here. And I've got them hanging from this chain hoist here. Um, I can only bring one over at a time because he is 50, basically 50 pounds. Uh, and trying to get him in there, it's you have to work at it. You have to know what you're doing. Uh, okay, so all I did was I used one of those totes. I made a hole in the bottom of it because I just made this. And then I took a piece of wire here and made some holes here on both sides and pushed it through. And now that I've got that, I'll have it forever. You know, I mean, I might make a couple more of them because it's nice to have them. And the way I have this configured here on this stand is I have those hooks on the back and I can just hang the buckets on there. This one, I can't, I have to hang it because it's too big. All right, so once he's in this position, then we can go ahead and cut his throat and the rest is history. There you go. But here you go, I'm showing this because this is a, a nice little niche that you as homesteaders can can do because this time of year there's lots of people that would like to raise turkeys but then what do you do with them but if you know how to process turkeys uh, it's sort of like deer season there's going to be several hundred of them that come past you and each one of them to process people will easily peel off a ten dollar bill to have you do it you have to you know get them plucked and all that stuff and that takes a little bit of doing but it can be done I guess this is our 15th year of doing it. So we've learned a few tricks along the way, but willing to share, not a problem.